My apologies for being a moment late. It's dark. Coming up against Clem here now. Let's get this underway. Let me get this started. So, Clem wins two in a row. In this best of 11. All kill Europe versus Korea match. I can say, um, if this is on YouTube, this might be the start of the next video along. It might not be. But this is probably part two by now. If this is on YouTube, so. Best of 11. There was probably a part one before this. And, uh, yeah, it's been a fun side game so far. If you're watching live on Twitch, then you don't have to worry about parts. <laughs> you either watched from the start or you didn't. Obviously, VODs will be available on the channel and on the YouTube as well. YouTube.com slash TV helps out a whole bunch if you check on over there and sub up and stuff and watch some videos. I think Dark was the obvious choice. Dark's had a really good winning streak against Clem lately. Like a really good winning streak. He picks Hardwire. We'll see what happens. I was just going to be seeing the uh, game setting up. This is on Central, right? So at least the server preference is in favor of Clem. And obviously if you win this, then we expect Rogue to come out. Each team does have two revives. That's how the best of 11 works. Uh, you have to revive different players. Apparently you don't have to use all of your players before you revive. So it is possible that Dark loses here and they revive Dark and he plays again, but... I, I honestly, I think you should use all your players before you revive, right? I, I think that's a lot of the time. I mean, I feel like that should have just been the rule in the first place anyway, but... Yeah. Alright, well, Ripper comes across the map, and a lot of the issues that Clem's been having with Dark is that he just can't really deal with Dark suddenly just coming across and just being super aggressive, like, a lot of units all at once. And I almost wonder if at this point Clem's got a little bit of a mental block against Dark as well. You know, Dark's be, uh, Clem, sorry, has been very vocal in the past about how, you know, to play Terran well, you've got to be, be very confident, and we've always said that Clem's a very momentum-based player, right? So, in that regard, I kind of, you know, I kind of wonder if you've lost so many maps in a row against Dark now, do you just kind of, you know, are, do you have the confidence to play your, your game? Do you just worry too much? Does that have a big impact? I think it really does. I think it really, really does have quite a sizable impact, so... That's going to be seeing our uh, Reaper coming around. Link Speed coming through. A couple of Hellions about halfway done. And, yeah, maybe time to... It would be a good time to redeem yourself if you want to make a point. Make sure your TVZ is still good. Be like, okay, I can take down Dark, then Rogue back to back. That'd be a pretty good statement to make. See what happens. You see a few Hellions still just producing off that factory to begin with here. Starport is swapping over toward the tech lab as well. It's just making some moves. I'm just going to be seeing our uh, drones continuing up. Marines is going to push the Overlord away. Viking is going to pop out and go over there as well. And yeah, just burn the cloak up. We'll see if he wants to keep it. I wouldn't be too crazy to keep the cloak. Right, I mean, that's pretty normal, actually, to keep Cloak going after you, um... Uh, you know, with a Viking first, and then you just go Banshees after. And at this point, you've really pushed that Overlord away already, so... You know, at this stage, you're really going for, like, a massive fake out. Like, what other scout is likely to come back in? So if you were going to cancel Cloak, you would have done so by now. So it is going to be Banshees on the follow-up from Clem. Makes a lot of sense against Zerk, who plays a lot of Roach openings, but... Right now, double upgrades are going to be setting up, and Zark is just letting, getting himself ready to upgrade in this game as he comes out of a supply block here from that Viking getting a first kill on the left-hand side. And otherwise... And he's still building Overlords, by the way. Jeez, he's going to have a lot of Ovies here. And a lot of free supplies. He does start up droning, and uh, we do see a chance for another uh, creep Jimmer. A chance at a mineral line as well. I mean, you're going to get one drone. The rest of them already pulled away, so it's kind of that typical question of, well, is it really worth even committing to kind of thing? No, not really. There's the melee upgrades. The dog is going to play some Ling Bane. We'll see how Clem deals with it. Yes. Well, like I say, for, to, to begin with, it kind of depends on how the uh, how the Banshee does as well, right? And right now, these Hellions getting into really interesting position, I feel like, repeatedly against these Queens, just kind of getting right up in their faces. Feels like they're in a great spot time and time again to try and 
get by them or, you know, just trade out a bit. So obviously trading out with the queens themselves is a little bit difficult, but do you see our queens still setting up in the center? Our creep spread continue to push through, and our 1-1 upgrade's already on the way. A couple drones are going down. Banshee is in play on the third base. Three drones, not a bad little start. Was it just one Banshee? Do we have another somewhere? I uh, didn't keep tabs on the production tab, so I'm not 100% sure, so... Oh, not, not sure we've got an answer for that right now, but uh, it can be weird just to see one, but then I feel like recently I saw someone else play just one Banshee. I think that's two, though. I think they're both on the fourth base now. Yeah, so there is a double Banshee. I mean, obviously, like I say, double Banshee is the expectation. I was just thinking back to a game, I think, even maybe from Beyond the other day, where he played one single Cloak Banshee, and I was like, oh, wow, that's so weird. It's going to be seen out there. Going to be finishing soon. Reactors across the board from Clem. So going to get a lot more production rolling. As uh, the worker count here is uh, about 10 in the lead from Dark. So I'd say a pretty comfortable position. Army lead for Clem. As we do come through. And just going to get a couple of drone kills. So not bad, not bad. Getting rid of a few of those. And just going to be seeing still a lot more links coming out. Our banelings continue through. And the melee upgrade still coming into play. With our bailing speed starting up over on the bailing nest. Banshees are back down. Left hand side now working through the middle of the map as well as we can come all the way through the center. Just now you've seen our armory is about halfway down. Factory is building up. And a couple of medivacs building as well here. All of that continuing to settle down so far. This is going to stim, and quite a few lings is going to be picked away at here. Our Hellions will continue to fight. A lot of these lings will be going down. Marines pulling back now as they're just going to load up into the medivacs. Oh, that was actually a really nice fight from the Hellions, though. The Hellions were able to do a lot. The Banshee's on his right side at the same time. Clem really being active everywhere he can be. Just trying to make the absolute most out of all of his units. Which is just very typical of Clem, right? When Clem is on point with those lift-ups and that micro, it does sometimes feel it's like, what are you meant to do against him, right? He's just all over you. Wow, look at this. 36 Ling's dead, and Clem lost a couple of Hellions or so. That's not a fair trade in the slightest. This Dark has a ton of money to spend as well, by the way. 1.5k in the bank. I wonder if he's having a little bit of lava issues. I wonder if Queen's just having to pull around a lot, and he's just missed a couple of injects dealing with this pressure. That's definitely uh, something which has been a problem in the past. A Dark has got an Infestation Pit, so he's setting up to the future, but he is going to hit 2-2 before Clem does. And one of the things that's happened repeatedly in Dark versus Clem lately is that Dark just gets to 2-2, just goes with him. Why is Dark building 12 Overlords? What the hell? He only he only needed like 4 Overlords to get max supply. I mean, I, that's that's one way to make it seem like you're not, you know, just to make it seem like you're spending your money. Oh my, I'm actually a little bit worried for Dog. There's a massive push coming his way. He just built 12 freaking overlords. I, I, I just, I have no idea, guys. I, I don't have words for that. I mean, the only good news for Dog is he might be able to have 2-2 two, two for this. But Clem will only have 1-1. One, one. Um, and I think that will be the situation. Maybe not right away here, obviously. Oh, nice dodge. The Wooden Mine doesn't get friendly fire. Good micro from Clem so far. He's still got units on the right side as well as... Dark comes through. Clem's trying to just back it up. We'll be fighting a few of these Zerglings uh, kind of squeezing through the mineral lines and so on. I'm just going to be seeing our uh, few Marines on the high ground picking away. Just going to load back up. Clem's still great with the drops. And right now, if I'm Clem, I think I don't want to be fighting until my own 2-2 is done. Obviously, as long as he's realized he's behind on those upgrades, that typically is a pretty easy decision to make. As long as... I mean, basically, if Dark forces a fight, then you have to fight, right? But if Dark forces a fight... You want him to be fighting into a defensive position? That's not really the case here, as Clem is going to lose all of his SCVs. Okay, well, Dog's going to make this really awkward for Clem, because this is, in a, in a big way, kind of a base trade. Now, if Clem can just not... I mean, what does Dog have defensively is what I want to know. If Clem... He's already losing a lot of SCVs, but if he can clean this up, and he still has his army on the other side, then I don't mind this so much. He can kill that Bailing Nest. No? Kill the Bailing Nest, Clem. Surely that's just... Uh, an obvious choice because Banelings are pretty good and you would like to stop Dark getting more of them as otherwise, if Dark doesn't have Banes, if he only has Lings, then this is way less scary. He is going to get rid of some Overlords on this left side. Maybe this is why Dark made 12 Overlords at once. He was foreseeing this as, uh, I mean, Dark doesn't really have money. Clem is going to chase these drones. I'm really surprised he didn't get rid of the Bane Nest. I, thought, I really thought that would just be a, 
I, I mean, it doesn't affect you kind of forever. Like, Dog can just build a new one, but... In, in a lot of worlds, right, if Dog had just saved a few more minerals, he could have had, like, 15 or 20 banes going again right now. Not sure it matters. Yes, Clem lost a lot of SCVs, but so did Dog lose a lot of drones and bases. Dog only has two active bases right now, and he is still stuck kind of on this Ling Bane as well. So definitely on a bit of a... Uh, Bit of a problematic spot. We're going to drop down here. If we can target fire that Baneling, which he does, then this is going to be a position I don't think you lose. These Lings will just be able, uh, will just not be able to break on through. And I mean, you've even got Hellbat still in here just dealing damage. I think Clam's issue is that his Medivacs have just been trading for so long that he's actually running out of energy on them. But it seems like Clem has enough. And well, Korea sends out Maru. Europe sends out Clem. And what do you know? You get into a position where, well, basically we get tied up. Turns out the Terran players on each of these teams are pretty freaking good. Rogue, of course, still lies in wait and revives on either side. So this has really turned into a heck of a series at this point. And as we just have a 50 supply lead. Dark was off in this game, guys. I don't know what it was, but... I mean, the 12 overlords are just like, you know, what's going on sort of thing, right? And Yeah, I mean, from there, obviously... I don't disagree with him attacking when he attacked because that obviously forces... Oh, what? That split was sick. Um... Attacking when he attacked made a lot of sense, right? Because you attack in such a way that you've got the upgrade lead, etc. It was actually just before then he was already in so much trouble that it didn't really matter, per se, what he tried to get done next. So, yeah, a little rough as we just see Banshee being parasitic bombed. I mean, if that's a summary of Dark's game, it's it's a pretty good summary of just why he's not really winning, right? I mean, parasitic bombing a lone Banshee is probably not the uh, ideal situation. And it's still alive, just killing drones after as well as... Clem is on the mineral line on the top side. That's where the extra drones are going down. Target fires that single bailing. Widow mine shot is good on the Lings. And again, Lings just can't really fight this. Even if the Medivacs don't have a ton of energy. There's still enough energy there. And there's still just enough Marines. That's just not a good fight. A couple Marauders left on the ground. Dark types GG. And it goes 3-3. Europe versus Korea in this Alimo League. Clem taking this and tying it up. Wow. Well, that is just exciting, guys. But something changed. Oh, they just took it off. No. They had the player names on, and they just took the player names off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bottom left is Clem. As you don't have much of a choice here, you have to play on this map now. Um, that's just a factor. That's just a thing. So, uh, yes, you have to play on this map. Um, and, yeah, we kind of just go from here, and we see... What happens, guys? Let's see how this goes down. Map number seven. <clears throat> so if this was a best of seven, this would be the ace match. But again, after this, teams will have to revive players. Each team can revive two different players to make this a best of 11. And uh, yeah, kind of exciting. We, we really have got a series on our hands thanks to Clan bringing it back since Maru initially was just destroying people. So in theory, Clem is about to all kill Korea, right? I mean, not really because the revives, but he will have been one of everyone. He will have been... He's already beaten Dark, Trap, and Maru. So if he wins this game, he's beaten all four. Question is, can he do it again? Can he double up on some of those kills and bring this win to Europe? Gas and pool, nothing weird from Rogue. Obviously, I think the maps were obviously... Initially, a lot of the maps were picked by the European guys, but definitely sending Trap out on Blackburn, set up to have Hardwire, then Glitter and Ashes for uh, the ZVTs against Clem, potentially. And so Glitter and Ashes still being here as the final map. But Game 7 was always going to be on Glittering once Hardwire was picked for Map 6. So even if Dark won, they were probably going to be pretty happy to have Dark on Glittering against whoever gets sent out next. So like I say... Earlier in the series, using Trap on Blackburn to leave Hardwire and then Glitter, and I think made a lot of sense, and that really helped out. Nice for Clem to uh, break his map losing streak against Dark as well, by the way. 
because that was getting a little bit out of hand. And it did it in such convincing fashion too. It was a very one-sided game where, honestly, Dark looked a bit flustered and looked like he was making mistakes too, to be fair. The seventh map is on west, as we alternate central to west every game. This will be Rogue favored when it comes to the ping, as we look to see who will take the lead here in this uh, best of 11. Three more maps on either side to win this whole thing out. As we are just going to be seeing the starport and a tech lab coming on through. A couple of extra Hellions still on the way. Link Speed is still coming up as well. It's just getting this full a rolling. No real surprises here just yet, right? I mean, no surprises here. 3cc off one gas. That's pretty standard given the size of the map. Everything really has been very just normal at the moment. This little grenade goes down. Pops the queen around. He's going to go for the Raven, by the way. I kind of like it. The Raven is um, something that Clamor uses every now and again. I feel like it's a cool build to mix in. Rogue is going to scout it right away. <clears throat> He's going to try and hide the Raven here, but uh, Rogue should be watching. Um, tries to fake Cloak. Yeah, I mean, really hoping that uh, Rogue makes a mistake. I'm trying to dive at the frog, but the Ling's just about block off, and the Spore goes down. Oh, so the Hellions end up losing out big time. Nice attempt from Clem, but really good defense from Rogue. Just filling the gaps perfectly and yeah, making sure those Hellions were not allowed access at all. Yeah, three Hellions. He had to stand Lings and a drone. Yeah, so the Raven generally as well. The problem is you usually with the Raven want to go up to like 10 Hellions or so because... The Hellions are meant to then scuffle with the Queens a lot. The Raven can drop all the turrets. Now that he's lost a few Hellions, you see this Raven just going to go behind Mineral Lines. That might just be the plan instead, just to change it up a little bit even. And I don't mind changing the plan. In fact, I think changing the plan is probably a pretty good idea, right? As I think initially you probably weren't going to do that well with the Raven and the Hellions now that you've lost the uh, Hellion count. So, yeah, I mean, Clem just adjusting based on what happens in the game. And yeah, Raven can still be annoying. You can see Rogue responding well, though, putting... You know, units in the right places, queens and spores where they need to be to defend initially. Here come the Hellions. This is what I mean when I talk about skirmishing with the queens. The order turrets help a lot, a lot. They put a lot of DPS out. And you can see actually two queens die here. And the Hellions believe they've got another trap to the top side. They do. They've got another one. Transfusion though will save it. The Clem's still going up to, what, seven Hellions here? So it was ten Hellions overall with uh, three lost early. Um, in fact, he actually went up to 12 because he lost two more in this. So, yeah, like I said, it's a heavy Hellion count. That does delay your bio play. But he is now starting to cut down on the Queen count, so you can obviously argue that it's for good reason. And that you're getting value out of it as well. Well, the upgrade's still coming in. Bailing Nest is coming through as well. Just going to be seeing a few Hellions up on the top side. Going to put some pokes and prods into this hatchery. And it's down on the south. We're going to see our Ling's just going to make their way forward. And, uh-oh, they're going to get straight in the run by. Oh, and Clem needs to pull back to deal with this. This is painful. And I like that he pulls his SCVs towards where his units are going to reinforce from. Uh, that obviously just helps out. Oh, no, the Widow Mine! <gasps> Honestly, Rogue wasn't even killing that much, but the Widow Mine kills about six SCVs, I believe. Oh, that Widow Mine actually killed more than any any of the Lings. Honestly, it wouldn't have even been bad for Clem killing that many Lings for basically free. The Widow Mine at least makes it a little bit better for Rogue. You can see Rogue only actually killed one SCV, but Clem killed six of his own SCVs because of the Widow Mine friendly fire. Oh, wow. That's, um, that's unfortunate as Clem does have a good army supply lead right now. Big map, though, as those beeps, by the way, those are on our Observer's PC, by the way. That's not on my PC, for sure. 
Um, so it's whoever is providing the clean feed. Well, Maddox is providing the clean feed. You guys probably know him. He's a Korean caster. Cast a bunch of events. Has run some events that we've been part of as well before. Um, but that was on his side, I think. So just letting you guys know not to worry. Your PC is not disconnecting or something. Bane's going to waddle in the left-hand side as... Do you have lings on the right? Just going to see a lot of those lings going down. I mean, the Banes are slow, so... How scary really is this? As Clem moves back, he's going to try and burrow these Widowmines. Let's see if they... Oh my god, they actually are going to blow up on the Zerglings. I'm still pushing on the other side as well, remember? So that's still ongoing. And we still push through. Marines on the top side. Going to try and get rid of this hatchery. That's what they've been going for, for throughout this. There is one Widowmine on the top side still. Unburrows, reburrows. Now we'll just connect on a queen, if anything, and obviously that will just be damage that can be transfused up or so. Okay, well this hatch survives, but look at the supplies. Rogue is struggling on army as the Raven comes back in, gets a couple drones. Clem is just, I mean, the fight across the map was just Clem trading so well. Gets so much value out of this. And from a series that honestly looked as though it was going to be a 6-0 for Korea... Clem has turned this entire thing around, and he's going to put Korea on some revives at this rate, because he's got double the army supply. Back in for this hatchery. Gets it. Nice. Lift up. Get out. Done the damage. Get away for now. Very nicely done. Well, just going to be seeing uh, a few Banelands uh, forcing the Marines to lift back up once again. On the left side, there's going to be another attack of Rogue. I mean, there's not a lot of units here from Clem, but there they are up the ramp. And the Widow Mine gets Lings that stacked. Wasn't the dead center, but was still a decent shot. Man, this is just getting a little bit out of hand, really, isn't it? It's uh, falling further and further away from Rogue, who... Can he stabilize due to the size of the map? He's got Widow Mines next to his mineral line. That's at least three workers going down, and Overlord takes another shot. If those had readjusted to the right a little bit, I mean, obviously then maybe Rogue moves his drones because he sees it, but, I mean, how many uh, Balins does Rogue have right now? He's got five or six running forward here. That's not going to do much to break the front line. He's got a couple more Morphin from what I can see. He's got eight more Morphin on production. He's down in upgrades on this fight as well. Thirteen drones going down as we fight on the other side. Oh my god, what a mind massacre on the low ground. As units run down the ramp, Clem lifts and leaves and just does very, very well. He's just going to be seeing Clem continue to control this game. Oh, we're going to see more of these Marines around the right-hand side. Lings continue to get picked away out of Balin target fired. And, I mean, now you're trading with Hydras in the front lines against Marines. That's never going to be good. These Hydras don't have plus two Carapace yet. They have no missile upgrades. So they're just not dealing that much damage. And these Medivacs are just going to keep healing here as well. Clam, one, two, and three Balins as we expect. I mean, didn't even really need to target fire all of those because they were just coming to the front. As Clem is once again pushing up the left-hand side, and he's just, I mean, these trades from Rogue just were not good enough. He sent a lot of units counter-attacking across the map and just couldn't find what he needed. Clem will put Europe into the lead. Go Europe. Go Europe. All right, uh, in we go. As we have in the top left-hand side, our blue Terran player is Clem, I'm assuming, because... Yes, it is. Uh, and in the bottom right, our red Terran player will be Maru. Let's get this up and rolling here. See what's going to happen. So, it's actually, I feel like it's very interesting that Maru picks Pride. Because I feel like, okay, so the only reason I think you pick Pride now is now I think you pick Pride because you want to use a Pride so that it can't be used against you if Raynor comes out next, right? That would be my logic, I think. You use Pride now so that if Raynor plays, he can't play on Pride. Which is a good way to play if there's... I, I just don't know why you wouldn't send one of the Zergs out on Pride first, though. Alright, so let's see what happens as we get this going. Obviously, no proxy from Maru, so that's what went very wrong last time around when it came to the TVT for him. As they already played once in this best of 11, and that's where Clem started his win streak. 
and Maru Proxy marauded while Clem in base 2 raxed. So you had Reapers across the map dealing damage, dealt with the attack, and uh, did very well there. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I guess if you send Maru out, you have to play on Pry, like I say. I don't think that's a choice. Because otherwise, Reynold comes out and plays on Pride after, and while he lost on Pride earlier, I'm sure he would be a little bit more aware. Second time around, apparently his ping is fixed as well, so... A few things to, to look at in that regard as we settle down and we set up. Factory is about to pop here from Maru. Both players will expand at the same time. Both of them into a reactor as well, so pretty much just mirroring each other. Rack straight down to the, uh, sorry, Starfort straight down to the bottom there from Clem. So Clem's going to be the aggressor here initially. Two Reapers on the way, where Clem's actually making Hellions out of the reactor. So very different approach. More Hellions versus more Reapers. Overall, I kind of like more Hellions. Um, I mean, Reapers can trade very well, but in good enough numbers, Hellions are just going to kill the Reapers so quickly as well. So I kind of like the reactor Hellions. Obviously, a lot of that is because you want to go across and you want to drop into the base. We'll see if Clem can get some good damage done with that. It's going to be seeing the extra Reapers continuing through. I mean, is it good for Clem that he's that, that Maru sat back still? I mean, I, th I think Maru is going to move out, right? Like, in theory, when you're reactoring those Reapers, you typically go and become the aggressor at some stage. She is going to load up the Hellions into the Medivac very soon, send them into the main. There's just a Medivac. Ah, we are going to build a Tech Lab too. I thought it was going to float home, but I was going to say, usually you follow this up with something else. Obviously, it's just a little bit awkward but as Maru's moved out at the worst possible time. He's now as far away as possible from his main to protect from this Hellion drop. He's unprepared. He's only going to lose four SCVs, though. Clem, very cautious. Doesn't want to get too involved. Doesn't want to go too deep. And probably knows he just didn't have enough of a chase potential on those SCVs. The factory kind of blocked where Clem would go around the CC to chase the SCVs as well. So the factory position almost helping in defending that because Clem came in from the bottom side. It kind of had to loop back around, you know, to the left of the factory and up to kind of continue from there. Now Mara will deal some counter damage and will get a couple SCVs himself with the Reapers. Only loses one so far. And into the next stage of this we go as Reapers hop back down to the low ground. And these Hellions still coming up. And they are going to go fighting a couple of these Reapers as well. So a couple of Reapers going down. A nice catch to at least get rid of them, right? You don't want to leave these Reapers out on the map or anything, right? The more you let those Reapers stick around, the more of a problem it's going to be. So clearing them up and stuff, definitely worth it. As we do see this Reaper Scout and the fact that Tech Lab's here... Uh, Raven building off of it. As we see the Raven already out from Maru, who all of a sudden done here. Three worker lead from Clem, a little bit of army supply advantage, and Clem will start up a faster third CC in his base. So good start so far. Reaper comes through, just going to go picking away at the SCV. Other SCVs coming in. Cyclone locks on, and that Reaper is dead. So Reaper does go down. Ravens overhead, tanks continuing forward, just going to be seeing more of these Vikings continuing through here, and just going to be seeing another refinery taking on the natural as well. Units yeah, out on the left-hand side, what am I going to burrow up on the higher ground? Marine's going to come through. The starport's still here, but I mean, it's not building anything anymore. I guess that's a nice bit of info for Maru that starport's kind of done. It is still weird, right? Because it's kind of this situation where now you don't actually have Viking production. But he does, because he built a starport at home. So he actually has a second starport already. So you can actually still build Vikings alongside the Ravens. So making sure he's going to keep air control. I like it's a lot for Clam. Third CC's going to lift up and move out into position also. Just going to take that over and... Uh, all right, I kind of like that as well. Triple Raven from Maru. How many Ravens was it from Clem? Did he get to three, or did he just stop at two? I'm not 100% sure. He didn't get uh, a chance to peek that. A 
Hellion's gonna try and just dive in. Love this. I mean, you've just still got four Hellions. Why not make use of them? He stops to fight on the ramp. I feel like he could have just gone straight through for the mineral line, though. I mean, now he gave the Vikings a chance to land, and uh, I don't know why he stopped to fight on the ramp. Maybe he was just afraid of what else was in here, wanted to take the guaranteed damage. Clemson, it's almost like cautious play, right, in a way, where it's like, oh, yeah, I kind of believe I can do very well. Oh, God, we're just going to hold a turret down, and we actually don't have right now... Uh, I mean, he didn't actually have siege tanks from Maru, so it was not a bad moment for Clem to move in. However, Maru does turn it into a much better fight. Now, Clem killed two of the Ravens of his opponent. He obviously got out Ravens, so that was a factor there as well. He's still got a Raven. He's, in fact, still got two, so it's now two to one. But will not have a ton of energy just yet, as he does get a lock on there. That's really good for him, actually. And sit in range of that tank for a little bit and tries to keep it up. Oh, he's one shot away, and he loses the Cyclone. There's a Cyclone from Maru gets a lock on. Pretty crazy bit of back and forth TVT micro going on here. As Vikings are going to fight Vikings. I mean, Clem lost a Raven there as well. He just had two Vikings still on the ground, which meant he lost that fight. So Clem not adjusting to the, the current situation of the fight. is now going to lose a Medivac as well. Maru nearly loses a Viking, but just narrowly keeps it alive. Oof. Wow, that was, uh, that was pretty wild. It's just going to be seeing tanks continue to siege and pushing towards... The Watchtower here, Marines trying to take a step forward. I mean, Clem just happy to hold the middle of the map. I think what Clem will not be happy about is obviously that overall here. He's starting to play a, a macro game against a Maori who we know is extremely good when it comes to longer TVTs. This is going to be difficult for sure as Vikings try and fight around that bottom side. Bit of back and forth, tanks and a Cyclone setting up. And we're seeing Turbo Attack is going to be on sieging, and, uh... Well, just going to go and pick our way through the, uh, rocks over on that right-hand side. So just going to start working on that as... We have rocks being picked away. I mean, obviously, Maru just opening up an attack path. I'm just going to give up the center for now. Keeps the watchtower, but in general, he's going to know that Maru's looking for other aggressive opportunities. So I don't mind him just kind of pulling home and resetting and defending at home. Feels like, overall, a much safer way to play. as a couple tanks already sieging, and this army is going to be turned around and chased away right away. Well, Cyclone lock on. Remember, Clem's building three Vikings at a time because he had that second star port for a while. So he actually has been doing okay in terms of keeping air control, uh, despite a couple of uh, back and forth fights in the sky. And definitely will be one of those things that helps favor Clem. Now, what Clem doesn't have is upgrades, right? He's missing 1-1. One, one, and he still hasn't started 1-1 one, one either. So that's genuinely a really big problem. As uh, air control is good, but if the marines of Maru can just get into a fight, they are going to be dominating. And uh, that's not something which just happens once. That's something which happens repeatedly, because then further down the line, you don't have 2-2, two -two, and Maru does, and that's another upgrade lead he gets to take advantage of. So that's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen as uh, we do see the watchtower taken by Maru. He will take some map control from this then, and obviously he's been kind of moving around in general. As a fourth command center lifts up and is going to move now to the left hand side. As both players are thinking about fourth bases. Arus is not quite finished yet, but is on the way. The Marines going to stem up and finds a few Marines out the front. They go down pretty much immediately. Going to get a uh, actual potential. I mean, you're not going to kill the CC, right? But these are the sort of Marine fights Clem doesn't want to take because he's down on upgrades. I mean, a few Marines getting left behind is okay. I think Mario wanted to try and uh, grab the Raven in amongst that. Uh, if he could have target fired that down, that would have been incredible usage of those Marines. You can see Mario's 2 2 lead is already establishing as well. And now Mario gets his own star ports on the way up. So he gets star ports 2 and 3. And so a lot of what Clem had in his favor, which was like the fastest second starport, now you could maybe argue is that, you know, that's why he's behind on upgrades. Well, that's now not really going to be a thing anymore, right? Those advantages are absolutely fading away here. Definitely a factor as our medevacs moving around different sides of the map here. Yeah, upgrades are about to be done. Marines get picked off. Let's see what Clem has on this side. He'll, does he have a defense in the main base for the drop? He might just glimpse this moving away. I think uh, the scan from 
Maori tells him that there are turrets there, and I believe there's Vikings as well, but we're not being shown what exactly the defense was, but it was enough to make Maori decide not to go for this. Now, Clem has on two of his own starboards, double armory upgrades as well, by the way, and also still no 2-2. Two -two. I mean, it might just be he really plays a more mech-focused kind of army, like, yes, he'll have Marines involved, but if it's more focused on the tanks and Vikings and air control, etc., then maybe he can get away with delaying 2-2 two -two over other priorities. Because this was him definitely choosing to go 2-2 two -two after he adds on extra star ports and so on, right? So, it definitely seems like a choice, as obviously we do have the uh, uh, Ravens just setting up on both sides. This is going to start turning into a Raven duel. It's one of those things that Clem became much more comfortable with, and which I feel like in the past I was very worried for him when he played against Maru, because I was like, well... Maru plays into the Ravens late game, and that's just really good, and Clem just doesn't seem to be able to do the same. Maru's gonna jump on this army from the bottom side as well, though, my goodness. Clem just got completely caught up, and this army just stuck up from the south, and that's gonna be major catch from Maru. He's putting himself into a serious supply lead, and he's gonna force Clem to probably have to lift off this base. Well, Clem was just trying to fight through on that right side, and like I say, this army on the bottom came almost out of nowhere. Clem needs to get some Liberators. I mean, I think he does have air control. That's one of those frustrating games where you kind of want to just be able to press the unit tab when you can, right? To just check things. I think he's got enough air control that Liberators would just be successful right now as Maru makes a, I want to say, a not-so-hot move in. Uh, this is where a couple of Libs really would have been amazing as, in the end, just the ground army is what survives. I mean, there's a lot of Vikings still, by the way. If they can justify landing... But then you're giving up your air control. Do you want to give up that air control? Not really. And again, that's where having a couple libs right now would go a long, long way. As these few marines are picking away and tanks are still pushing forward. There's one liberator on the way out. Now there's a second one coming in from elsewhere as well. It's going to be a bit of a factor for sure. There's Clem. It's going to keep on moving in. I mean, Maru is rebuilding Vikings and Ravens. He's going to try and stim up this ram. Oh man, there's just so many Marines, and Clem needs the tanks to support, otherwise the Liberator gets targeted down by Marines, and that's what happens. So now you have to land your Vikings to kill off the tanks. I think this is just too far gone, it got out of control, and Maru was able to make the play from that bottom side, and we tie up 4-4. And now Europe have to revive a player. As Clem's run is finally felled. Wow. Okay then, guys. Now Europe will revive a player to take on Maru. Their map pick, and I believe though it is going to be the West Coast server, so I think it is going to be to Maru's advantage there. Very, very exciting stuff.